friends, thanks so much for joining me this month. Today we are going to talk about top coats and I wanna dive deep into the subject of top coats and my goal today um, in the next 30 minutes or so is to teach you as much as I can about top coats so that you know what to use when, what not to use when, and how to apply each top coat properly to get the best finish that you possibly can. The top coats I have before me are by no means the comprehensive list. There are lots and lots out there, but we are gonna cover the basics um, in this list. We're gonna have our water-based top coats and our oil-based top coats, um, as well as our waxes. So we will cover um, the basis for each type of top coat, and um, that should help you out, even if you're using a different brand, a different kind, something like that. You might have your very favorite top coat too, and I hope, hope that you will share it with us in your own techniques because you may have found something um, that we haven't found yet and that will work great for everyone. So we're gonna talk both about painted finishes as well as wood finishes um, on top of stain, and we're gonna dive deep into each product. So, are you ready to get started? Let's do it. Let's first talk about top coats over a painted finish. I get a lot of questions about this, so let's do it. These are two sample boards. All I did, this is a raw piece of pine, um, and this was painted with lamp black milk paint. This is painted with chalk paint um, because I wanted to show just the difference in the paint finishes here. Um, let's talk about first our milk paint. So when I do a dark color milk paint on a surface, any milk paint, you don't have to seal unless you want to, or unless it's an area that you need a lot of durability. It doesn't need sealing just to seal it, which is unlike the chalk paint. However, I've noticed on the darker colors in milk paint, when I'm talking about coastal blue, lamp black, Queenstown gray, anytime I paint something like that, it's a dark enough color that it picks up just even some handprints, fingerprints, skin cells. Do you see that? It kind of smudges it. So when I do a dark color of milk paint, I like to seal it with High Performance's flat top coat finish. Let me show you. A lot of people struggle with getting clear top coat on the dark colors. They say it smudges or it smears or it doesn't go on smooth. Let's see if we can remedy that. First things first, when you open your can of top coat, um, the water-based finishes, like I say, they have this milky finish to them. You always, always stir them, do not shake them. When you shake a can, it adds air. Air bubbles can get trapped into the product and it can mess with your finish. So we always stir and not shake. Just stir it up from the bottom, make sure um, it is nice and smooth throughout. Now the most common problem when working with top coats is not applying enough with this water-based high performance top coat. So I have my pretty brush here. You wanna use a really nice smooth bristle brush if you're hand painting this on. I do not use foam brushes. Um, I have had trouble sometimes with foam brushes getting some air bubbles in my finish. I don't know that that's always the case. That's been my experience. You can also spray on the clear top coat if you like to spray. I just find it easier to use my brush. I've already got them out with paints and all that. So here's the deal. You need a lot of top coat. This is what I do. When I am paint top coating a painted surface, add a lot. Like, did you see it drip off my brush? Get a lot on there. I think the most common mistake is not using enough. If you don't have enough and you start pulling at it, it's gonna, that's when it gets streaky, it gets uneven, doesn't turn out very nice. So we add a lot here, even to the point that it looks milky before it's dry. I've added a lot, smoothed it out. I'm gonna go over it one time with long brush strokes, keeping it nice and even just like that, and then I'm gonna let it dry. This stuff is made to level, to self-level, to smooth out on its own. That's what it's made for. You get the little edges here, catch any drips. 
if you have a really detailed piece, occasionally you might miss some spots. You might have to do a second coat of top coat over the paint to eliminate any streaks. But that has been the most common problem I've run into. It's just simply not applying enough top coat. There we go. So that is that high performance top coat over milk paint and the flat finish. We'll let it dry and see what it looks like. While that's drying, let's talk about chalk paint. Y'all know by now, I don't use chalk paint as much as I used to, but I do know it's still a very popular paint, so it's definitely worth talking about. There are some different ways to seal a chalk paint. Chalk paint must be sealed, um, because if not, it's just not as durable. It doesn't have the curing properties to it. And the chalk paint also, because it is just a flat finish, of course you're gonna pick up any oils, from your hands and it's not gonna have a nice finish unless it is sealed. Different people like to do this different ways with waxes and oils. I'm gonna show you my favorite way to do that and that is with flat out flat top coat. Flat out flat is the flattest top coat that General Finishes makes in their water-based line. Same thing here, it is a milky finish. We're gonna stir, not shake. and apply it exactly the same way. You will notice, especially in the chalk paints, the color will deepen and darken as you add a top coat. That would be the same if you waxed it or oiled it, anything like that. So you'll get a little bit of a deeper color as you add the top coat to the paint. There we go, just like that. We'll let that dry. And again, it'll be the nice flat matte finish while still sealing the paint and keeping um, the, the strong properties of the water-based top coat. The nice thing about water-based top coat, you can just wash out your brush, rinse it out with warm water, you're not ruining your brush. Um, it will also dry pretty quickly, enabling you to put another coat on if you need it or to begin using your piece. I would say top coats dry pretty quick. Um, I would say the same two to four hours like we say with paint, even though this is gonna be dry before that. Again, give it 24 hours before light use um, and a, a couple weeks to fully cure. One more thing here, just one tip while we're talking about, I know that you won't always be painting or top coating over raw wood, but a quick trick here. Once this is dry, since I did just a raw piece of pine that I'm putting these coats on. It's going to break, be a little bit rough. Uh, I call it kind of nubby, like a nubby sweater. Um, it'll be a little bit rough. And in order to smooth it out without uh, taking out any of the color, like if I were to take sandpaper to this, it's going to get down to that raw wood real quick. And I might run the risk of sanding through my color. Grab yourself a paper bag, like just a brown paper sack from the grocery store crumple it up in your hand and just lightly run it over your finish. It will smooth it out for you, like I say, without getting down to raw wood again. You may have to do a second coat of top coat after that brown paper sack rub down just to get a nice smoothness, but that'll take out any nubbiness of the wood um, that you might feel since we're working on raw wood. Just a quick tip for you um, in case that ever happens. Let's talk about our water-based top coat on top of a stained piece of wood. I would say the water-based top coat is a great all-purpose sealer for a piece of wood that has been stained. The application for um, top coat over a stained piece is very similar to the wood application. Um, I don't find that it's any different. Again, we're going to add more than you think you need and smooth it out, and then it will self-level as it dries. So we'll do the same thing here. Again, it will sometimes look a bit cloudy until it is fully dry, but that will not be there once it's dry. Got some sawdust on it from the garage there. We don't want that. Okay, there we go. 
When you are top coating a stained piece, whether this is the top of a piece of furniture, the whole piece of furniture, whatever it is, it is usually recommended that you do at least three coats of top coat. Three coats is my standard um, for any stained piece. Uh, if I feel like it needs more, sometimes it will get more, but three coats is usually enough of the high performance line. So what I'll do, I've given this coat number one of top coat, let it dry until it's dry to the touch. Then I get 400 grit sandpaper. That is my trick. That is what I have found to work the best. 400 grit very lightly over the surface in the direction of the grain. Again, that will take out any nubbiness, any imperfections, um, anything like that that may have come up when we did our top coat. And then you would repeat the layer of top coat. Again, let it dry, sand it down before your last layer of top coat. Um, and then that would be a finished piece. So that is how you top coat over a stained piece of wood. Let's get now into some of our oil-based finishes. I wanna show you this one. This is Armor Seal by General Finishes. You can see on here, it is an oil and urethane top coat. So it is a combination of an oil and a polyurethane. I do not use polyurethane anymore. This would be what I would use as my oil-based top coat in place of, say, a polyurethane. Um, no real reason for that. When I found my water-based top coats, I really liked the safety of them. You don't have to be so careful with rags, um, combustion, anything like that. And they're safe to use inside, outside. For a home workshop, to me, that was just a safer option. This, I don't notice a huge smell to it, but this is back to an oil base where you need to be careful with it. Um, and it is a longer process to finish a piece of wood, but there are some definite benefits to it. Um, and there are some reasons I really like something like this. With an oil base finish like this, we are building up our layers. So like the water based finish where we're doing three layers of top coat, this one often is going to get at least three, sometimes five, depending again on um, how you like the finish and what it looks like. Just like with an oil-based stain, the oil-based top coat does take longer to dry. It has to um, not only penetrate the wood, but also evaporate any excess. So it just takes a longer dry time, a longer process. This one in particular says 12 to 24 hours between coats. So again, it's just a longer process. You have to be prepared for that and ready to do it. So let's get it on this piece here. One thing that's really nice about it, I do feel like it's easier to apply a little bit more foolproof in the application. Let me show you what I mean. Again, I'm gonna make sure to stir, get it all stirred up. You will know it has the potential to amber. It is a yellowish, yellowish orange clear liquid and give it a good stir. It has a slight odor, but it's not super stinky. And I like to apply this with a rag. So I get a cotton cloth, an old t-shirt, um, something like this, just cut up into pieces, wear gloves so as not to get this all over your hands. Again, when I dip it in, you can see um, just the yellow liquid there. And again, it's definitely more watery. So that's another reason why we need more top coats as we apply it. So I dip in my rag into the can and I am just going to rub on this finish. I don't rub hard. We, we are not really applying any pressure. Um, just making sure that we get a nice even coat. If you're working on a big piece, a big tabletop or something, um, this will stay wetter, obviously longer than a, the water-based top coat. So it's a little bit easier to work with in that way. It's not gonna dry too quickly um, or anything like that. So you apply it a generous amount with your rag. This stuff, again, this is Armor Seal, it says just to go over it 
and make sure you have a nice even coat. Not really, just removing any excess. You don't want it dripping on there, pooling on there, but making sure, looking in the light, again, just it has a nice even coat and texture to it. Just like that. Okay, next up, let's talk about an oil finish. So Armor Seal was an oil and urethane finish. Let's just talk about a pure oil finish. Hemp oil is pretty popular and I've showed it to you before um, in a few applications. My favorite way to use hemp oil is when I've got a really old piece of wood, something like my steamer trunks, when it's just old, it's dried out, um, it's like it can't get any worse. Sometimes all it needs is some hydration and hemp oil is a great way to do that. Again, because it's an oil, it's soaking into penetrating the wood, um, giving it back some color, some hydration, some life. So hemp oil is a great finish to consider for that. Unlike our top coats that we just talked about, both the oil and urethane, as well as the water-based top coats, those dry hard. That's what we call a hard finish. An oil finish is not hard. It is, I don't know that you call it a soft finish, but it doesn't dry with the same hard um, shell almost uh, that the top coats we just discussed do. So again, this is penetrating, but it's not a hard finish. And it's recommended that a finish like this would be maintained. So every couple of years, you would come back in and oil your wood. Um, that was popular um, with some furniture makers, Danish teak oil, things like that. There's certain um, brands of furniture in certain eras that every few years the furniture needs to be re-oiled. Um, so this is a maintenance finish, something that you would just have to do every few years to keep up with. Okay, what I do with hemp oil is pretty much the same application as our other oil finish, just a clean rag. You can also put it in a little dish, use a chip brush and brush it on. Um, depending on how dry your wood is, will depend on how much you need and how much it soaks up. And this has a little bit of a darker, it's almost like a, it reminds me of olive oil, like an olive, it's got a green hue to it. You can really apply it, get a good bit on there. This is also really, it's good to have if you want to revive an old finish. You know, maybe you've got a piece where the finish is not completely worn off. It has an old layer of varnish on it. It just needs, again, a little bit of life. This would be a great way just to go right over top of an existing finish. Kind of freshen it up. So again, I just like to apply a good bit there. And what it recommends, put in, Put on a good coat, let it dry for, I think it says about 30 minutes. Let me double check. And then you can kind of buff it out. Where are the directions? Mm -hmm. Apply the oil liberally. Then after a few minutes, remove the excess oil with a rag. So as this sits, and again, depending on how dry your wood is, let it sit, let it soak in. You can come back in a couple minutes just with a dry rag remove any excess and kind of buff it out at the same time. Okay, the last finish I wanna talk about is a wax finish. Wax finish finishes got really popular when we're talking about using it over chalk paint. I feel like they've come back strong in the last few years, um, but waxes have been around for a long time. Again, a wax, just like the oil we just talked about, is a maintenance finish. Um, it's something that would need to be reapplied every few years or as the piece ages and dries out. It's not something that's going to last as long as a hard top coat. This is again considered a soft top coat. It's not going to dry with a super hard finish. One of the nice things with wax, as well as with the oil that we just did, is it dries really quick. So every once in a while I'll be working on a project. I want to add a little top coat and I just want it done really fast. Well, wax is almost dry to the touch in like 10 minutes. It hardly takes any time at all. So it's nice because there's a quick turnaround to it, um, which every once in a while is just super handy and useful. 
Um, wax can also be used, again, like the oil to refurbish old wood, an old varnish, something like that. If you just wanna refresh the piece, um, wax can be a really great thing to consider. My favorite brand of wax is Fittis and Sons. Um, it is, again, it's a softer wax. It's pretty smelly, so you've got to use it um, in a well-ventilated area. And again, be careful with your rag or your brush, whatever you're using. But there are so many different brands out there. And there are lots of different ways to apply it. Um, some of you might have a wax brush. Something like that is, is um, very useful to have. Another way to do it, sometimes you can just apply it with a rag just so you get enough, but not too much. The common mistake with wax is actually applying too much. Um, unlike the top coat where we usually apply too little, with wax you can apply too much and then it's harder to buff out the finish. As you're applying the wax, it's like you're buffing it and applying it at the same time, uh, making it practically ready to use instantly. So again, that's kind of the nice part about it. This one here, I'll tell you what I'm using is uh, the Wise Owl Furniture Salve. It's interesting, on the bottom, it says that it is a hemp oil, hemp seed oil contains, um, but I think it is a wax and a hemp oil together. So it's a combination of these two, and it really does smell really nice. I would consider um, going around my house with this and just freshening up any wood that needed uh, a little more life to it. Waxes do give a really nice shine. It's just enough, it's subtle, um, but it is still there. That is one really nice thing about a wax finish. It's just a really pretty subtle sheen to it. So there you have it. So if I've missed anything, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to ask. Hopefully this was helpful to you and will give you a good idea of what to use next. I can't wait to see your pieces and we'll see you next time. Bye guys.